My name is Terrence Barkin. I'm the executive director of the Graphene Council, and we're hosting today's webinar series on graphene and energy storage devices, including batteries and supercapacitors, and all those different chemistries that are working on in this sector. Well, welcome to you. We appreciate having you here. Uh, John is working with a company called Lavidian. He's the CEO of the company. Sure, thank you very much. I'll give you a quick overview of the company, as you said, Terrence. And I'll jump into the battery side specifically. Uh, there's three others from Lavidian who are going to join today. Uh, there's myself, I'm, I'm CEO. We've also got Christoph Koziol, who's our Chief Scientific Officer uh, and who's spent his career in the graphene field. And he'll talk you through most of the technical detail on the battery side. Uh, and then we have Guy Downey joining us. He's the Head of Sales and, uh, and BD. So um, let, let me start off with uh, the context of Lavidian and then we'll jump into batteries. Um, specifically, um, Lavidian are in some ways um, a well-established company in the graphene space. So, formed in 2012 under the name Cambridge Nanosystems. Uh, we're based out of Cambridge in the UK, is where I'm sat uh, talking to you from today in our R&D uh, Technology Centre. Um, so formed in 2012, operated under Cambridge Nanosystems. Uh, Lavidian uh, is the new name for that company, which we launched last year. Uh, and the reason for the change was partly one of new ownership uh, and partly one of really a focus on decarbonisation and climate technology, because at its core, what Lavidian does is to produce graphene and hydrogen uh, from methane, so from um, from waste gas, uh, and, and the core of what drives us is really that decarbonisation enablement um, that takes the form of a graphene application. So we're really focused on where can our graphene have the biggest impact on on climate change, be it through making materials more durable and sustainable, or enabling new technology like. Uh, uh, a, a battery, for example, I, I drove to our facility today in an electric vehicle, so longer battery life is uh, very close to my heart. Um, and we also produce hydrogen as a byproduct of our, of our process. So that, that's the, the way that we build graphene uh, is through a, a methane plasma process. Uh, and uh, we take that CH4, that methane, and we we produce a uh, kind of very um, high quality graphene flakes, uh, we'll, which we'll talk about today but also um, hydrogen. So that's the, 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 that's the company overview. Um, I'll talk a bit about the impact that uh, the graphene we make has on uh, battery cells specifically. Um, and then uh, Guy Downey is gonna talk to us about where we are doing that work today. So try and bring to life for you uh, who we are working with, uh, with that graphene application in, in the battery space specifically. I think Christoph, Koziol, who's our chief scientist, was having a few connection issues, but hopefully he's going to join us um, any um, any moment and he can start going through the, the, the details on the technical side. So that's the uh, the overview. I, I think I've talked a little bit about um, this next slide. It, it really, uh, at its core, Lavidian are a graphene production company. So we're, we're very much focused on producing um, high quality, low carbon um, graphene that's done, as I said, through a, a methane plasma process. And we have two grades of graphene uh, that that process produces. G1, which is our highest quality, uh, highest specification material, and uh, G3, um, and both of which are a, a, a uh, we, we produce in graphene flakes and are a, a small number of um, nanoparticles thick. So that, that's the, uh, the overview, really, of the graphene and the, um, and the process. Now, um, I, I can share these slides later on. We have a few data sheets here with some um, uh, images there of the graphene, but also some of the key um, characteristics of, of what I called um, G1 and G3 just outlined there for you. For the, for, for the more technically minded, I'm sure you can uh, dive into these uh, after the call. Um, so that's the, uh, the data sheet. Um, now let's talk about batteries specifically. Lividian back in August of, of last year, I spent a lot of that time talking to um, battery uh, cell manufacturers and, and really we're working with companies who are looking to improve uh, the uh, conductivity uh, and, and really the, uh, the effects that their battery has or the, the, the attributes of those batteries. I'll go through what they are um, 
at the moment. Um, I think one of the key things we um, are able to do is because we produce graphene in a continuous um, process that there is no uh, batch to batch variations. The graphene that we produce is very consistent in terms of the, um, the attributes that it has. And it has a very high um, surface area. So it's very um, uh, fluffy. It describes it on this, um, on this page. I'll, I'll now, now take you through what that means in terms of the attributes that that graphene has for, uh, for batteries. Um, so here we talk about the C rate, uh, so the kind of charge and discharge rate of those batteries. Um, and we've done, uh, one of our customers actually has done some, uh, uh, some work showing the impact that graphene has um, when added um, to their battery um, on that C rate. Uh, so here you can see the impact that the graphene has compared to carbon black, for example, or, or to a, a, another graphene, which has a, a, a higher number of um, uh, particles in terms of its thickness. Um, and this is just really one example of how we try to bring to life what that effect is. Um, we've got Christophe Coziol uh, on the line there, who's our chief scientific officer. Um, hi, Christophe. Um, so I've just, um, Christophe, talked through an overview of Lividium, we're, we, we're getting into the detail now of the um, impact that the graphene has on batteries specifically. Um, any any builds from your side, Christoph, on the, the, the C rate impact? Uh, yes, uh, the, I think the, the interesting advantage of, of the graphene that um, uh, which, which we are using from our process is that it, it has got a fairly high surface area um, and also a high amount of edges that comes with the graphene. So the flake size is, um, is much smaller than what you would traditionally see, normally see out on the market. And, and that combination of, um, of active edges and uh, the planar uh, graphene uh, structure give you an interesting ability to stabilize um, uh, the chemistry that takes place within the battery. And that's precisely you know, uh, why we see some interesting um, stabilization effect, especially on the, uh, on the charging rate um, of, of this particular prototype unit that was made in the past. That's great. Thank you, Christoph. I'll just keep moving us through the different battery attributes. Could you um, lead us through this next one, which is on capacity, Christoph? Uh, yes. So. Um, in, in this particular example, uh, we have been um, again working with uh, one particular uh, partner of ours and uh, comparing the effect of uh, graphene uh, to carbon black. Um, carbon black is typically used in um, in ele electrochemical system because obviously of, of its of its cost and um, and also. Um, uh, the, the size, the ability to, in, to integrate within the, the chemistry of the battery. Uh, but um, when we uh, looked at uh, the integration of our graphene, again, uh, we were able to see uh, an interesting increase in, um, in the surface area of, of, of that uh, mix with, uh, with particular this additive that we were adding, again, comparing it very much to, to carbon black. Uh, this has been done on uh, small um, button type of batteries, uh, so small demonstrations, and again, um, able to see uh, an interesting increase uh, in the, uh, in the uh, capacity of these button batteries in, in two different uh, configurations that we, have, uh, uh, that we have used and tested in the past. Okay, John, uh, would you mind jumping to the next slide? Yeah. Um, and uh, another important aspect uh, of what graphene can bring, um, and again, uh, th there has been quite a lot of uh, research around this, looking at cathodes and anodes, um, and that is uh, the aspect of, of conductivity. Um, that's because of uh, an interesting, uh, uh, highly crystalline, crystalline structure that uh, you get with graphene, um, which uh, obviously it's far more superior uh, than we see in carbon black. 
but also the ability to uh, percolate better. Um, in the past, uh, another material that has been um, explored uh, uh, as, a, as a replacement of carbon black was very much uh, a, a structure of um, representing carbon nanotubes. So again, in this case, we are looking at uh, not a 1D, but 2D material. So you've, you've got this additional uh, aspect ratio, which is an interesting parameter to add um, into uh, the development of anode and cathode, uh, far more better than um, a spherical shaped carbon black, uh, which again would require a significantly higher loading fraction. Uh, we did look at uh, different type of um, uh, other additive, uh, very much comparing itself to graphite and uh, um, other graphene nanoparticles um, available on the market, again, originating from graphite, uh, we were able to get um, quite superior performance in conductivity purely because um, the graphene that we produce is made um, bottom up. So uh, we are designing uh, the, the material uh, with very high uh, quality, structural quality, but at the same time, also high purity. Um, also, uh, we are able to, uh, to have the graphene in the absolute pure form without exposure to moisture or oxygen or any other um, species present in the air. Uh, that's very difficult to obtain uh, if you are dealing with carbon black or graphite, which is, which is exposed to, uh, to the other elements. So, so when you actually do form uh, do want to integrate uh, an additive um, like graphene, you know, you should be mindful of uh, the other um, impurities that might be present, absorb on the surface of these materials and therefore uh, potentially uh, deteriorating uh, the, the, the conductivity um, of, um, of, your, uh, of, your, um, uh, of, of the part of the battery that you're trying to enhance. Uh, so in this case, Again, we have seen quite quite interesting superior effect purely because of the the way how our graphene is um, is uh, is produced and uh, and uh, integrated into the cell. Thank you, John. Um... Thank you, Christoph. So those were the main slides that we pulled together. I think we wanted to give you a flavour of. The attributes that the graphene had and, and how those related specifically to uh, the batteries. So um, we've got Guy Downey now on the phone with us. And I thought, Guy, you could give a, an overview of where our graphene is being used so the audience have a sense of, of, the, of the application. Uh, and then we'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks, John. Hello, everybody. My name is Guy Downey. I'm the Sales and Business Development Director for Lovidian. Um, so as Christoph and John have said, um, we've got a number of projects going forward just now with our graphene technology. Um, the graphene is mainly used in, in the majority of R&D uh, projects that we've got going on right now as an anode um, enhancement. Um, so that's really trying to increase the capacity um, of the battery, um, maximise the energy density uh, with one particular uh, customer, we are approaching doubling the energy density on the battery technology that they have. Um, so that's a, a huge improvement. And they are exploring the use of our graphene with other nanoparticles, in particular um, carbon nanotubes. Um, obviously, the, the benefit to our customers is higher capacity, faster charging, lighter weight, um, and so on. Um, in particular, some of these applications can be not what you would consider very large batteries, um, obviously for vehicle weight and so on, but also smaller batteries for equipment um, and even handheld equipment. So in those cases um, where handheld equipment has to be portable, um, you're looking for um, faster charging, but also reduction in um, the, the, the charging time and lighter weight for handling. So these are these are key uh, areas for the development that we are, we're trying to assist our customers with. And we've got around 10 of these R&D projects going on right now in the, the sort of battery arena. Um, so we're very excited to be able to deliver on those projects with our customers 
and we'd welcome any other inquiries um, along those particular technology enhancements where we can help our customers and anybody on this call. Um, so thanks for that, John. Thanks, Guy. So Terence, I think we've successfully managed to leave half of the time for questions. So over to uh, over to you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. If you want to um, stop the share, then we'll we'll do this in a kind of a, a Q and A format. Um, one of the questions that came in from the audience is, how do you get favorable percolation behavior from the small lakes that you are using? So I guess that might be for Christoph. If you just need to unmute yourself, Krista. Thanks. Thanks, Terence. Uh, yes, so uh, please remember, I am comparing ourselves to carbon black. Uh, you know, if you were, for example, to, um, to, to compare graphene to carbon nanotube uh, material, you know, you would get uh, far better or far lower percolation threshold uh, for these materials, but then, you are entering into different, obviously, material type, and you've got other problems. You've got economics also. <laughs> you've got challenges with price there. So we are comparing ourselves to carbon black, uh, and uh, you know uh, that the, the aspect ratio here is huge uh, as compared to carbon black. Understood. And just in a general question, uh, this kind of goes for all graphene companies that are looking at this space. Is the you know the the approach, the business approach or business model, are you selling into existing battery manufacturers? Are you considering, you know, doing your own cell construction? Um, who's the target audience for your technology? Yeah, I can take that one. So we're not looking to build our own battery cells. What Lavidian does is really a focus on the production of graphene and the production of hydrogen at the same time. So we're looking for, well, actually, I'd say there is kind of three groups in the battery space specifically, existing cell manufacturers, new and innovative cell manufacturers who are looking to enter the market, either with sol solid state or other batteries. And thirdly is the di distributors of materials to those battery companies. So we kind of have active conversations with all three areas, uh, but we're not ourselves looking to do that battery cell production. Um, Guy, any additions on that focus from, um, from your side? Yeah, there's a, there's a big drive to, to obviously use graphene and advanced materials across the industry, um, simply because of the push toward net zero and, and other areas that, um, in, that we can enhance. Um, we are finding at the moment that the, the acceptance for our material is higher on um, companies where they have a, a certainly a more aggressive R&D um, area is in the, um, the sort of handheld and smaller battery technology to improve that um, that use but it's uh, it's really across all sectors um, and it's and it's not it's not restricted in any way that that's that's for sure thank you and Dexter did you have a question you want to jump in with or uh, yeah I guess a guy you had mentioned that you were working with a partner uh, where you were able to double the energy density that they have um, what kind of batteries were, were those and where exactly was the graphene being applied? Um, I guess one of the electrodes, could you talk a little bit, it was the anode, the cathode? Or what, yeah, what I think this is, this is definitely quite innovative. Um, so from, from our perspective, there's, there's a limited amount we can share on that right now, um, but they were focused on um, the rate of electrical um, transfer and uh, a big focus on uh, or limitation on the cathode uh, side for their technology. So um, we, have, we have worked with them with different grades of graphene to enhance that process. And of course, they're combining that with some other nanomaterials um, to, to get the best possible results. So um, it's, it's something that, yeah, um, I, I can't unfortunately share uh, more on that specifically, but um, you know, we, can, um, we can hopefully publish a little bit more in time. Well, then I guess maybe Christoph, um, where do you see the graphene that you're producing at Lavidian being used within uh, batteries? Do you see it in particularly in the electrodes? Uh, could be used in the electrolytes? Uh, where, you know, what what role do you um, see it being used in? 
So, um, you know, Levidian is not developing batteries, of course, and, you know, we do not um, have any internal work that we do uh, on batteries and, 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 and battery chemistry. Uh, so we very much rely on uh, the external partners that, um, that uh, you know, that work with us. Um, and uh, we had very, very positive feedback on the electrode, uh, especially because of the conductivity aspect um, of the electrode. Uh, but we also had an interesting uh, uh, feedback uh, uh, for, uh, for the ionic uh, um, activity of the battery. Um, and again, uh, you know, customer coming back to us because of an interesting um, um, uh, uh, behavior handling uh, of thermal uh, thermal behavior of the battery. So, so you know, not just uh, looking specifically on conductivity aspect and conductivity of of the electrodes, but also uh, looking at other issues that you may face with the battery, like uh, you know, an overheating, uh, you know, thermal management, um, and again. You know, the question is how this graphene interacts with, with your cell is it, something that would be different for different chemistry, would be different for different manufacturers. You know, it's not something uh, I would say you know, that you can answer really easily. It very much depends on, you know, how do you make your cells? Um, what do you really want to enhance? Um, and, uh, and, and how do you also bring the graphene to, to your cell? So for example, um, in some um, manufacturing process, we, we are aware that you really need to avoid uh, you know, exposure as much as possible uh, during the assembly um, of, of moisture or any other element coming out from uh, potential additives. You know, this is what I mentioned, we could also bring with our graphene, you, know, you, you can really have it uh, clean from moisture and oxygen because mm -hmm. we can give you that option. You don't need to handle our graphene in in this environment. You can just you know expose it to air, obviously. But it gives you this option. Uh, so so I see the benefit also coming from from that that side. Um, and one more aspect I wanted to add is that um, you know we have published an interesting work on amphiphilic behavior of our graphene uh, when exposed to an uh, hydrocarbon oil and uh, and water environment. Our graphene, because of again this high surface uh, area of, of edges that we have, you know, um, within our flakes, actually um, the moisture uh, aligns itself around the edges, and the hydrocarbon, uh, you know, interacts with with the with the with the graphene hexagonal structure. So we found, um, you know, an interesting behavior coming from our graphene, you know, interacting, uh, enabling two different uh, uh, chemistries, you know, coming together. And, and I think again, some of our um, partners have expressed, you know, a positive uh, feedback on this. So, uh, so it's worth to again consider this, you know. And again, if you put large flake of graphene into your battery cell, would could it disrupt? Um, could it disrupt, you know, the the, the, the function of, of 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 the battery? So, so that's the, I think it's not a simple answer. It very much mm. depends, you know, from manufacturer to manufacturer and battery to battery. And um, there are many parameters to consider. Mm -hmm, yes. Um, yeah, I guess, so you're working with uh, 10, I guess, banner, battery manufacturers and working out on uh, how your material works with their chemistries. Um, so the, the tests that you referred to, are those your internal tests or tests of one of those 10 partners or you know what what do those tests represent because we have some questions from the audience regarding the test in particular and i guess it'd be good to know whether you know that's internal tests or, or tests of uh your partners so we we would get can i just jump in on that christoph we would we would give advice on um the blending of the material the dispersion of that material as an additive but we um usually depend on um our r d uh Sort of finishing at, the, at that gate, and then um, the customer R and D to pick up their expertise in creating the battery itself. So, as Christoph said, we're not battery manufacturers, and we've got no intention of of getting into that space. Okay. Well, then I think I'd just like to. There's some pretty good questions from the audience uh, um, about the tests, and just basically, I think the most basic one is how much, what percentage of the electrode composition is graphene. 
for these tests? Is we have is that something we can talk about? Oh, I'll I'll take this. Um, the the percentage that uh, that we are adding, uh, I would say, is the minority of that cell, so of of that of that electrode that we are using. Okay. So uh, you are, you know, so so these are small amounts being added, uh, and we we see some interesting uh, effect, uh, you know, um, on it. But obviously, ultimately, uh, the question is, you know, could you transition to uh, to ready for graphing um, um, device? And uh, that the the reason why we don't do it is because of price. So you know, at the moment, we are balancing the economics uh, with performance. So, uh, you know, we are not saying you're buying um, a graphing for uh, X amount of money, but we are saying th this is the benefit of what you get uh, with uh, with this material coming in pretty much. Right. So, so you're not displacing, you know, 100% of the carbon black with, with graphene in, in the electrodes. You're sort of adding or a, a small percentage of, of graphene to the, to the carbon black. Uh, no, and that, that's also the beauty of the percolation. You know, if you look into the uh, the, the theory, theory, of, theory of percolation in these composite system, carbon carbon composites, you will find some interesting modeling that even comes uh, from some of our academic work in the past, you know, many years ago, and you will see that actually you may uh, really benefit of having carbon black there. So mm -hmm. it's not necessary that you would want necessarily to replace it entirely, mm -hmm. uh, but but that percolation will depend on what kind of graphene you are using. You know, we, mm. we, we have spent a lot of time, you know, studying this, um, looking at different combination. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it would depend on the graphene type. It would depend on, uh, on the way of, of, of making it, making the, the device as well. Uh, all so the your small flakes are significantly better than if you were used to large flakes in this combination of carbon black and graphene, is that fair um, takeaway? Uh, so small flakes means, you know, half a micron flakes, um, mm -hmm. basically you're, you're dealing with this uh, range. So it, it, that, that gives you the ability to really integrate the material quite nicely within the rest of the matrix, but it's not small so that you are losing the benefit of, uh, you know, the properties um, of giving you the conducting pathway. Um, mm. But still, you know, um, an electron flowing through uh, a composite of pure carbon black and electron flowing through a composite of, you know, half a micron flakes is, is it, even if you, if you compare the, the transfer of electron through these different materials, you know, you see, you know, uh, qu quite a different order of 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 flow within mm -hmm. graph, obviously, you know. Uh, so the, the transfer is, is is it's it's different. It's much better, you know. Um, the, the the larger flakes you have, the conductivity will will get better as well. But then you are facing other problems, you know, mm -hmm. the problem of integration. Um, the problems of uniformity as well. Uh, if you really get into larger flakes, then you know compounding it uh, and getting uniformity throughout the material is challenging, and you will have some defects coming because of that. You know, so mm. you, you need to strike a balance uh, between these two. But uh, having said that, we are not doing these tests in Levidian. You know, mm. what whatever we get is uh, through the partnership. You know that uh, so, so all the tests are done through third parties really, and uh, and the feedback is uh, you know what we are getting is is through our uh, you know re reliable network of partners. Excellent. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Christoph and and John Guy and, and Christoph. Thank you all for participating today and for sharing with what you're doing at Levity. And I think it's another illustration of. It takes partners uh, to work together in this uh, supply chain with your focus and specialty on the production of uh, pristine graphene flakes um, that are then used by all these R&D departments that are working on you know, the next generation battery technology. So thank you. Thank you for uh, being part of that today. And thank you, of course, as being a member of the Graphene Council. We appreciate you and, and um, glad you could make it today. So thank with you. that, thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone.